Welcome back everyone. As you probably guessed from the title and the thumbnail, this is the rifle that we are going over here today from the folks at Stag Arms. This is the Stag 15 Tactical. This is the current version as of like, if you guys are watching this in 2023 that they're making, they've made several versions over the years. And I actually reviewed one of the earlier versions and basically all of the things I said I would improve on the earlier version they did on this rifle. So there's a lot going on. It is a lot of value for the money for a rifle in my opinion. But of course we're gonna walk through all the different things that go into an AR-15 specifically this one and then of course we're going to test the accuracy as well then i'll let you know about reliability all the things we normally do here but one thing that's different about this rifle than virtually any other one out there i mean i'm probably sure there's some exceptions to it is that they make one for wrong-handed people so this one right here of course is your standard one set up for right-handed shooters this one is the exact same rifle just a different color um, and set up for left-handed people so it has left hand eject here and then our safety as well is sort of offset while it is ambidextrous it's offset for left-handed folks to use so uh, they give you the option if you're a left-handed shooter and you don't want brass going in your face it is there for you as you can see everything is backwards for assist is backwards shell deflector is backwards for you backwards folks out there um, so today um, what we're going to do is this is going to be a mug club episode so we're going to do the free video here on youtube and rumble talking about the rifle and all the details that you guys need to know if you're considering getting one and then we are going to head over to mug club and do some exclusive content we're going to talk about the new frame and receiver news uh, that just broke as of a couple days ago when i'm making this and then we're going to talk about the censorship that youtube has done to my nashville video and kind of how to combat that those sorts of things and then we're going to take viewer chats over there on mug club but for folks who are interested in that uh, there is a link on your screen here as well as a discount code that will get you guys a free membership and there's lots of folks over there making exclusive content myself alex jones stephen Crowder. Hodge Twins, Brian Callen, uh, Nick DiPaolo, and others, um, and it's censorship-free, which is really the biggest thing I like about it. So I suppose with that, let's head out to the range and see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this rifle, and then come back and walk through it piece by piece. Time to see what kind of groups we can get with this rifle. Just first excuse out of the way. Uh, six power is kind of the minimum I use for these tests, so a little more magnification probably would help here, but we have a target down range at 100 yards. Uh, primary arms, Nova 1-6 to six on there. In the gun right now, we have some Remington 45 grain 223, and that is a hollow point bullet. So a light for caliber option. Then we have a couple heavy for caliber options uh, to follow that up, which is like match stuff. Uh, target down range, I believe I said it 100 yards. CTK precision rest, and uh, that's pretty much it. All right, next load up here is gonna be one I've never used here on the channel before, but did get it in from our friends at Firearms Depot. They are sponsoring all of the ammo that you guys have seen throughout this video. Uh, so definitely appreciate that. Check them out. They have great prices as well. I share their stuff all the time on social. So again, thanks to them for that. But this is 223 load. It's 68 grain boat tail hollow point match from Hornady. And so we will see how it likes this one. All right, last load up is gonna be some Federal Premium. This is their gold metal burger, 73 grain. I've had good luck with it in the past, but you never know. Every barrel's its own animal. Let's go check it out. One thing I say on the channel a lot here when doing accuracy tests is you really have to find the load that your rifle likes because they're all different. And uh, this is the perfect example of that. Think of how different the perceived accuracy of this gun would be uh, if we didn't fire that last group, right? So just goes to show every barrel is different and likes different loads. Uh, so first up here, we had those 45 grainers. And it was all right. We're right at an inch and a half on that one, center to center. Then we came down here at the 68 grain Hornady, you know, a match load, but for whatever reason, not super match in this barrel. And we're just under two inches, yeah, just under two inches. So probably an inch and three quarters on that one. And then we fired that last group of the burger bullets, which is phenomenal. One of the better groups we've ever shot out here on camera. Uh, it's center to center, it's about, Center to center, it's right at half an inch. So half inch group there, which obviously we will take all day long. But uh, again, even this one there, inch and a half, two inches, then half inch, uh, the rifle is absolutely 
capable of MOA accuracy and again using a six power scope so who knows maybe that would have been a quarter of an inch but regardless it's very accurate as you guys saw provided you use the right load. Before we go tip to butt on all the details of the rifle, I do want to thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is Collector's Firearms. So if you guys haven't heard of them and check out their social media, I definitely recommend doing so. It is a pretty cool gun shop, and they're not just a gun shop. Obviously, it's an online place that you guys can shop without having to go to Houston. Uh, but what they do is they offer everything from flintlock to full auto in one place. They buy whole collections, and then they will obviously sell them to whoever is interested in the items. But lots of very cool, very unique, and generally rare firearms over there as well as like modern guns that you guys would expect they probably have a stag 15 for example so if you guys haven't checked them out definitely do so especially on their facebook page they do a lot of updates so thanks to collector's firearms and now let's get into uh, the rifle tip to butt so we're going to start out up front with the vg6 flash hider so this is the delta 556 i've said it in many videos here on the channel over the years that i do think it is the best muzzle device that is a non-suppressor mount um, out there on the market for general purpose ar-15 use there's a lot to that that statement i just said but uh, it, again if you guys have watched like my ultimate dmr build or my ultimate spr builds that we've done over the years this is what we use on all those builds why well, it is essentially an improved A2, and you guys who are new here know that I like the A2. And the reason for it is it does a great job at flash hiding for a closed tine flash hider. Obviously, if you have a three prong or something like that, you can increase the flash hiding capability, but what you lose with that is some of the compensation uh, that you get with it. So there is a flat bottom here on the rear, so it's gonna prevent a bunch of dust kicking up if you're firing from the prone or something like that, or mitigate it is probably a better way to say it. Uh, but then we have these long ports here, and then short ports as well. And what that's doing is providing some level of muzzle rise, uh, decrease in muzzle rise, I should say, as you shoot. And all in all, guys, very, very good flash hider. It gives you some added control that you wouldn't get, but also still gives you a very good uh, flash hiding signature. And because it has a closed time, like if you're somebody who operates like in a farm or woodland area for hunting, it's not gonna get caught on branches and things like that. So all in all, just an excellent muzzle device. Again, there's a reason we've used it on lots of builds over the years. Continuing back to the barrel itself. This is uh, the barrel and bolt carrier group, as you guys know, are sort of the heart and soul of an AR-15. And this one is phenomenal. As you guys saw, great accuracy out there on the range. And it is a 16 inch affair. It is 4150 CMB uh, steel nitrided, of course, and it does have that Hanson profile to it. And that really is one of the better do all, if you will, AR-15 barrel profiles out there in the wild. Um, so basically it starts out a little bit larger back here, then tapers down. And then after our gas block, which is still a 0.75, uh, it drops down to about a 0.625, so sort of penciled beyond the actual gas block. And th that's perfect, in my opinion, for a general purpose AR-15. Uh, just for folks who are new here, the traditional barrel that they used to use that I criticized them for in their previous version was a government profile. And so it was a very similar profile back here, a little bit different. But out here, it opened up to a 0 0.750 diameter. And it's just, it's exactly the wrong profile that you would never want in an AR-15. Of course, it's the one the government uses on a lot of theirs uh, because government. Um, but this one here keeps it nice and light at the end and then gives you a little bit more material back here towards the chamber, which is where a lot of the heat is, like if you're doing a lot of rapid fire, things like that. Back here, about, about to here, is where it gets really hot. And then out here, you really don't need all that material to dissipate the heat. It's simply not necessary. And as you guys saw, very good accuracy uh, was capable of this barrel system. And so, excellent barrel. It's a very proven barrel. Again, I have multiple rifles with this exact barrel on it, uh, simply because it's a proven performer, as you guys just saw. So continuing on back, our gas block there, the set screws are dimpled and have thread locker on there, which is a perfectly fine way to install a gas block. We talked about multiple ways to do it over the years, and that is one of the very good ways to do so. The actual uh, gas tube itself is a stainless one, a typical mill spec in that regard. Some folks uh, are looking for nitrided gas tubes, but it's absolutely not needed in my opinion. Uh, and it's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with a nitrated gas tube, but the stainless ones work just fine. And one thing that's nice about stainless ones is if you ever find yourself in a situation where you're mag dumping like 10 mags in a row, uh, it will fail before the barrel does. And that is by design. Eugene Stoner designed the AR-15 like that uh, for safety reasons and for longevity reasons. That said, I would imagine most of you will never be mag dumping uh, 10, 10 magazines in like a minute. Uh, but if you ever do, 
it will still work and it will still give you a single shot gun rather than a bullet going out the side of the barrel, which is the alternative if you have a nitrated gas tube. That's probably way too much detail about gas tubes. But anyway, <laughs> let's continue on. So our uh, handguard here, this one here is 13.5. It's MWOC affair. It has the MWOC at the three, six, and nine o'clock position. And then at the offset positions, it is cut deeply on there to give you, again, just weight savings as well as heat dissipation. Then up here on the top, you'll see it has a 1913 rail all the way back, but again, it's scalloped out for weight savings, but still gives you that uh, durability and consistency that 1913 rails give you. Uh, moving on back here to where it mates up with the receiver. It has anti-rotation built into the body of the actual handguard itself. And then it has this steel nut that goes into a steel barrel nut that clamps it down into place and automatically centers it. Again, this is one of the ones that I've used on multiple builds as well. And uh, it really is a very smart way to install a handguard. And of course, you guys can see it's also cut out there for our uh, cover. So that way it just adds an extra point of anti-rotation to it. And again, I have multiples of these and never had a single issue to date. Continuing rearward on the gun, we obviously swapped it out for the left-handed version just to get you guys a look at that, a better look, I should say. And as you can see, it just looks weird to me to not have your forward assist and shell deflector over here on the right side of the rifle, but we don't because, again, this is the lefty version. So um, in order to dissemble this, we're going to make sure it's clear. And even clearing it is weird, right? So <laughs> look in there, make sure we're good. And we're going to push our pins out. Those pins do come out in standard AR-15 ways. They're not backwards or anything like that which is nice. And one thing I should point out is that it's not like fully left-handed, i.e. the magazine release is still in the traditional place as well as the bolt catch and things like that. But again, the safety is uh, prioritized for left-handed folks because Stag uses an ambidextrous safety, but over on the non-firing hand side, it's scalloped out there. And the reason for that, for folks who don't know, is that when you put it down and then you're on the actual trigger, it doesn't rub your finger. So if you had the same size, like full size over here, it would absolutely rub your trigger when you're pulling the trigger, trigger finger rather, when you're pulling the trigger. So that's why they scallop it out there. It is a very good design in that regard. And while we're on the subject of the lower receiver, let's talk about it. These ones here have the Wyoming uh, marks on there. So Stag's very proud that they moved from Connecticut out to Wyoming. And I don't blame them for that. I would be proud of that too. Um, so it's all over there with the Stag logo on both sides. And then we do have a flared Magwell. Again, this is something that in the review I did years ago of their older version of this rifle, I said, there's no reason why you shouldn't flare the magwell. You should flare the magwell. <laughs> so they flared the magwell. Good on you, Stag. Thanks for listening. Uh, so it does help with reloads and it absolutely doesn't hurt the structural integrity of the rifle in any way. Both the upper and lower are forged 7075 T6 mil spec aluminum. So very strong, very durable in that regard. And also if you want to use any type of aftermarket parts or components, uh, you can. That said, I really don't think you need to on this rifle as we'll discuss throughout. So uh, the trigger itself is the RBT from Hyperfire. Very, very good trigger. There's absolutely no reason in my opinion to change it. And it's a single stage trigger and we'll see if we can just get it to break there on camera. So really no movement initially. And then the reset, very strong, very tactile, but essentially as soon as you push your finger on the trigger, you're on the wall. So that's kind of how that one works there. And then again, single stage, breaks right around four pounds on my gauge. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that trigger in any way, in my opinion. We do have our Magpul enlarged trigger guard there, and then our Magpul MOE grip. And looking into the actual buffer itself, it is an H buffer, which is what I recommend as the baseline for a mid-length 16-inch AR-15. Uh, castle nut itself is staked, as you would expect. And the stock is the Magpul SL stock, one of the better stocks out there on the market. Uh, I have a full review of it, but if you guys don't want to watch a full review on a stock, we'll go over it real quick for you. It does have steel reinforced QD point right here for your slings, and then additionally has our traditional sling attachment points there. It's very snug on the receiver extension, which is mil spec 7075 T6 and six position as well. Uh, it doesn't move on you, it's not gonna shake, it's not gonna wobble. And then to adjust it, you just move this lever here, and move it in or out to whatever position you want it to be in. Very, very good stock. So that is the lower receiver. Now moving on to the upper receiver, I suppose. This one's not clean. Let me actually swap it out for the uh, FDE one because I actually cleaned it so you guys can get a better look at it. All right, getting to the FDE version here, we'll pull our bolt carrier group out as well as our charging handle. Look in the upper receiver, you'll see that it does have M4 feed ramps. They marry up nicely to the actual uh, barrel extension, which is exactly what you'd want for a quality AR-15. So smooth feeding in that regard. 
And our charging handle here is the breech charging handle. This is a fully ambidextrous charging handle. So regardless of which side you actuate it on, it will allow you to act actuate the charging handle. And then it has this raised edge here. And this is to prevent gas to the face. If you guys are shooting this suppressed, it helps seal up the system. And that way you won't get gas in your eyes, which is unpleasant to say the least. And this one here is the larger version. They also make a, a version with smaller latches, but this is the standard one that comes from the factory uh, with the Stack 15 Tactical. Now our bolt carrier group here is a nitrided affair. The bolt itself is MP tested. Uh, it is not HP tested. So uh, this is a debate that we've had over the years on the channel uh, for a long time. People like to debate it down below in the comments section. I welcome that debate. Um, but with what a lot of people feel is that with modern manufacturing techniques, uh, the high pressure or proof round that you fire to get that HP rating on there is actually detracting from the life of the bolt because it adds excessive wear. And with the current state of uh, MP testing or Magnaflux, if you guys are industry folks and you guys understand uh, the machining part of it, that's the same testing that they're doing where they're shooting particles at it and uh, seeing if there's any like cracks or impurities in the metal that would cause it to fail early and again a lot of people believe that with modern manufacturing you don't actually need the hp testing and that it actually detracts from it so again we'll let you guys discuss that down below in the comment section but the bolt itself is 9310 steel and then continuing on to the carrier we do have a full auto profile as you guys can see here stake just fine up there on the gas key and uh, the nitride finish is going to give you good corrosion resistance good lubricity and uh, all in all it's just a very good bolt carrier group finish one thing i should note is that whoever does and i imagine it's probably stag actually uh, who's ever doing their nitride finish is doing a great job because this rifle has tons of rounds on it and very very little surface wear but one thing that's nice uh, that's visible anyway one thing that's nice about nitride finishing or any type of nitro carburization is that it even like in the areas i'm not sure if you guys can see it hopefully we're rolling photos for you but the areas where it's showing wear uh, the finish is actually penetrated into the metal surface itself so uh, it still has that good corrosion resistance it still has the good surface hardness all of those types of things that nitriding gives you uh, even though the black part of it is starting to wear that's one of the cool things about the actual finish itself at this point in the video, we've covered most of the details of the rifle with a couple exceptions that we will talk about here before closing it out. And the first one there is going to be reliability. So obviously we have two of these rifles, uh, a wrong-handed version and then a standard version here. And uh, through the both of them, we have over 3,000 rounds. The majority of them have been on this, about 2,000 and about 1,000 here. Um, and the reason for that is that I'm right-handed, just prefer a right-handed rifle, but it was good and fun to run it left-handed just to kind of get that feeling for it. Um, but uh, all in all, like I said, over 3,000 rounds through both rifles we've had a grand total of zero malfunctions of any kind so you cannot do better than that in terms of reliability accuracy you guys have already seen the accuracy quite impressive another thing we need to talk about is going to be the weight on this and again because it doesn't have that government profile barrel and because we have some other lightweight components on there it comes in pretty darn light this one's just a hair over six pounds unloaded without an optic on my scale it was like six pounds one ounce um, so relatively lightweight for an ar-15 particularly one that has the features that this has uh free floated rail all the different accessories uh magpul accessories and things like that um that tend, tend to add to the weight versus like a, a quote-unquote gi uh, style gun so a lot of people are really going to like the handiness of this rifle for sure uh, another thing we didn't mention about the barrel is that all stag arms barrels are rated for life so if you ever shoot out your stag arms barrel uh, it doesn't matter how many rounds through it you put through it and it's transferable as well so if you hand your rifle down to your son or something like that 40 years from now and he puts 30,000 rounds through the barrel or something like that uh, and it starts to have worse accuracy they will replace it for free no questions asked so that is also another cool thing about these rifles uh lastly thing we need to talk about is going to be price point on these so it obviously depends if you're going to get a Cerakote one it's probably a little bit more uh but the base rifle in black is coming in at uh, $1,099. And if you guys are watching this within the first two weeks of the release of this video, uh, there will be a code Mr. Guns and Gear spelled out just like the channel, and that will get you guys 10% off of that price. So coming in right at $1,000. And I think without question in my opinion based on my experience based on everything we've talked about here today that is a very good price for this rifle so um again they kind of got free i guess uh advice from me a couple of years ago on how to improve things and they went and did it which i 
I love. I, you know, it's hard for me to complain about that as long as it works correctly, and this one works correctly. Um, so for a thousand dollar rifle, I think it is in uh, contention for one of the better ones out there that you can get from the factory. I really don't think on this rifle there's anything you have to upgrade in order to have a quality functioning rifle, if that makes sense. Now, obviously, there's things you can add. You can add lights. You can add uh, thermals that you guys have probably seen us shooting it with. Uh, you can add vertical foregrip light, all that sort of thing. But out of the box, you get a very high quality rifle from a uh, company that has a very high opinion in the industry if you look around and ask people about the rifles you're generally going to see good things being reported um, because it's just a quality company that makes a quality ar-15 and it comes in at a price point lower than some of the competitive options out there um, but right in line in my opinion value wise with what uh, the rifle offers that's that's my take if you guys have any questions you can always post those down below in the comment section as well and if you guys aren't following me on my social media sites i definitely recommend you do that number one we break news over there a lot that we can't do with full videos additionally uh, we post deals so if this rifle goes on sale the optic goes on sale anything like that you guys can get those ahead of time without having to wait for a video to go up I recommend the non Zuckerberg ones, um, but there is that. If you guys like this video and you're not subscribed here, definitely fix that by hitting the subscribe button. You can also hit the notification bell to increase your chances of actually seeing my videos in your feed. If both of those, <clears throat> excuse me, if both of those things aren't working, you can sign up for my email at the website here on your screen. This email goes out once a month and it has all the videos since the previous month's email. So that way there's no big tech algorithm censoring you for my content. And lastly, uh, we also have a daily deals email, which goes out every day. It has eight of the best deals that we find around the internet. And if it's in that email, it's the best price for that product of that I know of anywhere. So hopefully it saves you some time because I've already done the price comparisons for you and saves you some money as well. And uh, that also has a good meme in it. So if you guys are interested in that, definitely sign up for the website here, at the website rather, here on your screen. And uh, with that, we're gonna close the video out here on YouTube and Rumble, and then we're gonna head over to Mug Club for some additional exclusive content. So with that, piss off YouTube.